Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? A good, wonderful place to be. Have you ever had a circumstance in your life when someone told you something important, but you just didn't really hear what they had to say? You didn't? Never. <laughs> oh, Damon, I'll pray for you. <laughs> It might have been instructions about something. It might have been directions of some kind. Somebody had something they really wanted to tell you, but you just kind of slept it off. My dad lived in Kansas City for many years, and I would go home and go visit him. And every time I would go home, no matter what, he would just say, I need to see you in my office. And then he would proceed to tell me about everything he owned and how I was to manage it when he died. And so I have to say that I was like, why am I here? Do I really need to know this? And it'd kind of go in one ear and out the other. <sighs> Yawn. So I knew that that was going to happen every time I went up there. But then one day it so happened that I was in charge. And then I'm like, what did he say? What did he say? Let me think. Where, where was this? Where was that? What was I supposed to do about that? It was all the harder because he was gone and I couldn't ask him any more. Imagine the disciples on that sunny Easter day. And there they are. They had been told numerous times this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, but don't worry. This is going to happen. I'm going to be tried and arrested, and I'm going to be spit upon. I'm going to, all these bad things are going to happen to me, and then I'm going to be crucified, and I'm going to die, but don't worry. I'm going to rise again. And they were like, oh, dear, yawn. Uh, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, can I be on your right and can I be on your left? And what is this rising from the dead? What does that mean? Well, I'm not sure they yawned. I'm not sure it went exactly for them as it went for me, like in one ear and out the other. But we're going to take a look and see where their minds are. Were. So here we are, early Sunday morning. I'm reading from Mark 16. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene and Salome and Mary, the mother of James, went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll the, away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died. The women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered, and they said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. Kind of a letdown, isn't it? Well, Luke adds in his gospel that the angel also told them to remember his words, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. It's so hard to move from tragedy 
to resurrection. So let's highlight some words to see the women's mindset when they went out there. They discussed on the way, who will roll away the stone? It's an obstacle. It's too big for us to handle. They were shocked when they got there and saw that it had already been rolled away. And to see a young man, an angel, in the tomb. They fled, trembling and bewildered. They said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. So their mindset was obstacles, doubt, fear, low expectations. Now we're going to look at some of the encouragements that they could have seen along the way that were there. The stone had already been rolled aside. An angel said, don't be alarmed. Jesus isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Now, does that sound familiar? See, they had heard that numerous times from Jesus. The angel said exactly the same thing. He has gone ahead of you to Galilee just as he told you before he died. Again, they had heard that. You will see him there. He said to them, I will rise again and I will go ahead of you into Galilee. That's what he said. Did you catch that? These are encouragements that God gave along the way. Do your eyes see the encouragements? Or are you stuck in the doubt, in the tragedy? He actually told them numerous times, just like my father. And I think their listening skills probably rivaled mine. How hard it is when tragedy happens and we can't move out of that tragedy to move from doubt to faith. We get stuck in the tragedy. Nevertheless, notice that God's plan presses on. God's moving. God's going forward. God is never stuck in time. So let's look a little further in Mark. Now this is on down in verses 12 and 13 of Mark 16. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem into the country. They rushed back to tell the others, but no one believed them. Still later, he appeared to the eleven disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had been raised from the dead. Ouch! <laughs> Welcome to Sunday morning. Jesus is getting testy. Testy. He wanted them to see it. Now Luke gives us a few more details about when Jesus appeared when they were eating. And it's important. There's four gospel accounts. It's important to read them all. And then you begin to see some connections. And each one, it's like if I asked you each to tell a story about a wreck. There would be four different versions, right, of the same event. So Luke highlights a little bit more. But the whole group was startled and frightened when Jesus appeared, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still, they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. Then he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? I would add, that's already prepared. They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it as they watched. So it's hard to move from tragedy to resurrection, from doubt to faith. If you can think of it this way, it's hard to move from the Garden of Gethsemane to the Garden of Eden. And that's what he's really asking 
us to do. So again, here is their mindset. No one believed them, startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost, filled with doubt, stood there in disbelief. Now, how long will they stay stuck in disbelief? How long does doubt and sorrow hold them? But also, we have to ask, these are questions for us, how long does it hold us? It is hard to move from tragedy to resurrection, from doubt to faith. It is hard to move from the Garden of Gethsemane to the Garden of Eden, but that is exactly what Jesus is asking us to do. Even today, he's asking us that in our circumstances. You see, Jesus was building his church with these people. Jesus is making a group of people for himself, for God, for the glory of God. Isn't that what you said, Pastor Roy, this morning? Yes, ma'am, that's right. Well, um, he's building his church. That's why you are here. You're his church. You're the ones when I said he is risen, what did you say? He is risen indeed. Yes. Now, Roy, I believe, asked you, do you really believe it? So we're going to be challenged today to really believe it. We're thrilled. I'm thrilled that you're here. But it does beg the question to consider your mindset are you filled with doubt at the proclamation that Jesus is alive? Do you think, well, that's too old for me to know anything about. That's too far away. That's centuries and centuries away. Or how can I trust that? How can I know for certain? Do you struggle with fear? Do you struggle with anxiety? Do you struggle with doubt and second-guessing yourself all the time? Is God really with me? Can I really depend on him? What when failure happens? How can I handle that? Do you think Jesus could possibly speak to you today? Just like he spoke to them. Just like he encouraged them. He's bringing them through. God's plan doesn't stop, but also God's plan doesn't fail. And so he's bringing them through. I've got a challenge for you. Come together with like-minded Christians like-minded seekers of God come together every week to this place. Come together to the church and face your fears, face your doubts, face your struggles with others, with the Lord. It's important. You might say, well, I only come twice a year. I come on Easter and Christmas. You know, that's good enough for me. My husband said, Okay, are you going to take your children to school only two days a year? <laughs> Somebody's going to be knocking on your door. <laughs> or you might say, you know, I can worship God anywhere. And that's true. You can worship God anywhere. I can worship God on the golf course. I can worship God in the backyard, in my pool. <laughs> Not my pool. It's too filled with leaves at the moment. Or I can watch online, and that's good enough for me. But the truth of the matter is, I want to challenge you that none of those things are good enough. You're not going to have the support. You're not going to be able to face things, have help from your brothers and sisters. Like, again, Pastor Roy said, what's the church supposed to be? The one who helps, supports, loves, cares for you. Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. And if you do ask, everyone who asks receives. Everyone who searches finds. Everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. And the scripture is, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on finding. But you still may object. How many times did we see the disciples object and stay in that doubt. You still may say, well, I, I don't know about that. I don't know that I can hear God's voice today, that I can hear Jesus. I don't know if I can trust that. Well, someone I know went to Hawaii with their family, and um, as they 
flew over the big island, and I guess they took a side trip and saw the big island where there was an active volcano, and they wanted to see what that looked like, and so they did. They flew over the big island in Hawaii and saw that volcano, and it had destroyed homes, it had destroyed farms, it had even evaporated a freshwater lake within an hour of it flowing near that lake. And so there it is, the lava smoldering at the edge of the ocean. And she said a scripture came to mind, and that scripture was a prophecy from Isaiah. It was Isaiah 61.3, and it prophesies of Jesus. And it says, He came to give God's people a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. How many of us have faint spirits? But God wants to give you the mantle of praise and that as God's people, they will be called oaks of righteousness. Well, you know, an oak tree is a huge tree with roots that go really deep. So that's strength. That's foundation. That's security. Oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. Isn't that amazing, Pastor Roy? And we didn't talk, did we, before we each preached? (laughs) The planting of the Lord to display his glory. That's what God's people are. You are the planting of the Lord. You, as God's people, shall build up ancient ruins. You shall raise up the former devastations. You shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. And so you bring in healing. You bring in forward-looking motion, hope, repair, rebuilding, magnificence, the glory of God. Because there's hope in the Lord. Let's say that together. There is hope in the Lord. I can't hear you. There is hope in the Lord. Yeah. So she writes, my friend, of these pictures of her. These are her pictures she took. This is obviously the ashes part of his story when she had the lava coming down and all she could see was lava. But then right around the corner from that devastation, she saw this. 200 to 300 feet waterfalls as far as you can see. Lush, beautiful trees, colorful flowers and fruits, amazing reef with fish everywhere. He will bring beauty from ashes. And so she felt as she was experiencing this, it it was indeed the voice of Jesus that he was helping her see that. Because she wouldn't have thought of that verse on her own. She, you know, he speaks. He speaks to us. And he will speak to you in the same way, opening his eyes to his wonder, if you seek him, if you seek him. But you might argue Christianity is too old-fashioned. You know, who believes that stuff anymore? It's behind the times. It's too narrow. There's all kinds of problems in the church. Yes, there's all kinds of problems in the church. That is true. But then who shapes your thoughts? Who are you looking to? Are you looking to the culture? Are you looking to celebrities? Are you looking to politicians? Heaven forbid. Are you looking to social media? If you watch, most of us, we're kind of connected there. You realize they don't go any farther than each other. Horizontal looking, okay? They're not... It's usually done in one generation. What is being taught and promoted or limited, it's a trap. It's a trap. Their time frame is so limited, and right now they're tearing humanity apart. You know, cultures, societies, 
new ideas, things that happen. Societies are not on an upward trajectory all the time. Occasionally they are, but not always. And sometimes they're, in fact, if you look at history, they tend to go down, 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 and then something happens to make it go up, which in the church we call the Holy Spirit. There's an infusion of the Holy Spirit. But they don't on their own. It just depends on what it's founded on, what that culture is, has as its foundation. And so we have to think for ourselves. What am I basing my life decisions on? I would say, look up, follow your faith. Give yourself to God because God has multiple generations view. Give God his Sundays back. Be here. Study Jesus. Take your study with each other seriously. Be swayed by your faith. Look into it. Don't be lost from it. Because faith matters much more than culture. In fact, your faith will shape your culture. So Jesus is asking you now, just like he asked the disciples, why are you frightened? Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I'm not a ghost. Because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I have. And as they heard his words, they began to be filled with wonder and with joy. And that would evolve. That would evolve as they were together. Because they met every day together for prayer. They got together. They supported each other. They had no idea where they were going at first. But you know what? They just started going out and they started sharing this good news. And then they wrote down his stories. And they wrote down his principles. And we are that church today. We are that church. It's not a part-time thing. Can we say that? It's not a part-time thing. Oh, you're not into it. It's not a part-time thing. You must give your all. Why? Because you're going to get out. Think of your work, how much you put into it. Think of the other things, the interests you have, how much you put into it. You have to put that into your faith as well. Many things happen in, in these walls. Many things happen to encourage you, to help you. Guess what? It spills out over into the culture. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen is a risky proclamation. Why is it risky? Because it has to take priority in your life. But the risk of getting it wrong, that's a worse risk. Worse risk. Don't yawn. Don't turn a deaf ear. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other because you have so much to gain. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. He will be killed, but three days later he will rise from the dead. So I declare to you, he is risen just as he said. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.